And now we're back with part two. So as we mentioned in the one before, it's starting off uh, with a bit of primer. So I've used XF19 on the main hole assembly, and then the tracks have been painted with XF85. So we've got rubber black, and I've also sprayed all of the tires in rubber black as well, because we're gonna use a template for those. So they're all sprayed up nicely, check the seams and, and everything's okay there. And now I'm making up my own color for this so the the m4 olive drab uh, just by adding a bit of dark yellow that to it i actually forgot this i used um just yellow <laughs> on the firefly so you'll see um I, i'm also building a firefly alongside this one so when that one comes out you'll see a slightly different hue because i forgot that i used dark yellow but it, it makes a really nice color i think that's absolutely perfectly um perfectly done as far as I'm concerned that's the exact color I was hoping for so I'm very happy about that so now we're on to the wheels and um, I'm just showing you here we're, we're putting on the idlers and just checking the fit and everything is okay so where I'm attaching these idlers uh, I'm using the slower drying Tamiya extra thin uh, so it gives you a bit more time that's it's workable and you can move it and make sure everything's in the right position before it actually sets up. Just gives you a little bit more time. Um, so I'm finding that quite useful. And I'm also uh, using a glove here to make sure I don't get any fingerprints straight onto the matte paint, uh, which is until I put a gloss coat or a matte coat on, I tend to find the fingerprints show up a bit. So it's just quite nice to uh, protect the paintwork from that. So we've got two types of idlers. I think we've got three main idlers and then we've got two smaller ones uh, set back a bit further so I'm just getting those on now uh, or that might actually be the other way around there seems to be two of the big ones three of the small ones so they're going on and um, one thing you've got to try and get sorted with this is just getting it all lined up so uh, once you've glued it on it's very easy there's a bit of wiggle room so it's very easy to get them to uh, kind of slant slightly and not be level across the top so now I've got the sprocket on, just checking underneath the fender that everything's in line. And um, once it's lined up, we're, we're good to go from there. So that, uh, that looks pretty good there. As you can see, I'm just checking. And uh, it's always good to do that because it, the top of the track sits level on that idler. So you really want to get that correct as much as uh, getting the wheels along the bottom correct as well. Now, unfortunately, I had a bit of problem with the footage, so I've not shown you how I painted the wheels, but where we had rubber black on them before, I just used a circle template, pushed the wheel straight up through it, uh, just so that the rim of the actual wheel shows through and not the tire, and then spray it the same color as the rest of the tank, and it gives you a really nice crisp um, edge to the wheel and um, a good demarcation between the tire and the wheel. It worked particularly well on these, because I had the perfect size uh, wheel template. Uh, and there you go, got the bogey together on the Easy 8. It's a little bit simpler than most, so we've got them all lined up there with the idler as well, and it's just a case of gluing those on and then getting them lined up. Again, using the same principle, uh, once it's all glued on, tilting the model over and making sure the, rows are in, uh, the, the wheels are in line all across the row. And it's, uh, it's easy to do. Tamiya's clever engineering shines through here. So these bogies pretty much clip in. They can only clip in one way, which is the right way. And when you clamp them in, and it actually takes on the, the, the glue bites in, you'll find they're more or less in line. But uh, this is the point I was mentioning there. You just check. And now we're on to the uh, decals. So I've actually put a gloss coat down on the model. And I'm going to be using these star decals, or I was. But uh, this doesn't go very well, unfortunately. So uh, you can see they're a little bit matte and they've got quite large carrier film around them. And I didn't cut into any of them because I thought they'd be okay. I've used star decals in the past, but they really, really did show up quite badly. Uh, they didn't go down at all. I couldn't get them to work whatsoever. Um, and it was really tough. So here you can see the gloss coat's on. And um, there's quite a lot of, uh, of decal that needs to go on to this one for this scheme that I've chosen. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it really doesn't work that well. 
<clears throat> already just on the sheet all they've done is gone into water you can see they've broken up now I did persevere and I got them all lined up um, and even after all of that we still had major problems you'll see at the end of this just how poor they look um, and the reason I chose this is to add a bit more colour because the ones in the Tamiya kit you don't get any stenciling and it is just pretty generic schemes uh, you've just got the black star on the turret so I wanted to add something a little bit different and I, and I also wanted to do one with black camouflage um, which is why I bought the sheet now I've picked this scheme that is not the one with the black camouflage and uh, I did that because it had uh, all of that information on the side but that has actually come back to bite me you can even see here one of the very tips of the end of the stars has come off and it, to be fair to it once it does all get together and it, you, you bind it in and it sticks it does join back up again so you can't really see it but uh, yeah it, you'll, you'll see in the next bit it's really not that good I'm not sure what went wrong here with star decals but um, I can't recommend this sheet at all it really uh, is a bit of a letdown and um, here you'll see <sighs> just uh, this is after i've gloss coated over the top so i've used solver set um, uh, to bind it down and then i have actually uh sorry no i haven't glossed over here so this is with solver set and this is where i was already thinking this isn't looking very good at all uh, now i'm not sure if you actually cut around it if it would have been any better but you know some of this you can where it says saint louis blues i mean you couldn't have cut around that any more than, than what you've done um, so it is it's a little bit tricky and all these blocks around the front you can see uh, this is just because they're matte really um, so there's there's that argument to it that p perhaps when you've got decals like this if you matte over them uh, they're settling a little bit but unfortunately these don't uh, I then go with a gloss coat that's the next step here so I, I had quite a heavy gloss coat over them to try and build it up then I sanded it back then added a matte coat which you'll see in this next frame and it still wasn't very good at all you can see how much is on um, that stencil at the back there uh, where the the numbers are and where I've had to gouge them out you can see how much varnish I've put on so uh, enough was enough I've gone for it sanded them right back and I've smoothed down the edges so that there's no ridge between the two so it's just uh, totally obliterated it going in with very high uh, grit sanding sticks and then blended back through and the finished result is this uh, I've uh, resprayed it and touched it up and it is pretty good it's as good as it was uh, there's a slight hint here and there that you can see a little bit but as far as it being a tank and um, I mean cast texture and all that it's not a problem so I was really quite pleased with how well that came back through um, it can the, the, the trick is to make sure you blend out from where you've uh, changed it you, you've actually sanded it smooth so it doesn't matter how thick it is at the edges as long as you blend through the paint is uh, being the Tamiya heavy pigmented paint uh, does actually fill the gaps and, uh, and gives you a smooth contour between the two and on the turret I actually reused some of the casting uh, texture anyway so that helped with all of that so I was really happy with that so a little bit more gloss went on again because for this one I decided to use gloss and I went with the the Tamiya decals and I managed to find a picture and this is what I mentioned at the end so I refer back to this picture with the snow uh, showing up so so you'll get that uh, when we get to that point but there you go that's um, that was the inspiration so gone for the the kit decals in the end uh, with the black star on the turret and the white star on the hull um, obviously very simple stuff and what I thought about doing with this is cutting right around the, the, the decal as tight as I could to remove any carrier film after it had been burnt once. And the effect was pretty good. As you can see, that's now been um, matted down again. A little bit more of a sheen to it, which isn't a problem. Uh, that'll help with some of the weathering. And when I, when I get into using the oils, that'll bring it down a bit more. So I was reasonably happy with that pretty good it's uh it's nice and smooth 
the, the decals were good uh, after all of the issues we had before you can see there's no problem but you, you, you'll you get what I mean it being quite a basic scheme I, I actually would have liked some of the stenciling down the rear of the hole and on the front and on the back but uh, Tamiya doesn't su supply that so uh, you know that's what I had to go with um, there's not a huge amount of decals out there I could from what I could see and um, I've re what I'm pointing out here is on the rear deck quite a few bits of it come off and I had to respray it so I've added back in uh, the handles and now we'll have a little talk down of um, a little bit of a change to the build okay a little break from the norm on this video um, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now I'm filming this live so you're getting this um, uh, today uh, I've just filmed this little bit because I had quite a lot of plans for this one and they've had to really change uh, so I'm still going to get this one out, I'm going to get it done this coming week and you have the final part next week. But what I was going to do was kind of build on um, quite a lot of the features of the kit. I was going to add the figure, um, I was going to try and do some snow effects and add it to a diorama because I've got a picture of it turned like this in the Bastoin area. It's got a bit of stowage and quite a lot of snow all over it. Now. Um, situations have changed and um, the world is in crisis I haven't got a lot of this stuff in I'm not actually gonna go out and buy any of that for this so I'm just gonna complete this one now by building it out of the box and I'm going to finish the model with the hatch closed like this where I was gonna open it I'm not gonna glue it shut so we there will there'll be um, an extended possible part four of this it could come at any time in the future uh, but I think it's it's best just for um, clarity to let you know so this week I'm going to go ahead and paint up the stowage and show you some of the things I've got and finish this one off and do the weathering and we'll have that in the final part so that will be next week. Uh, so I thought it was worth mentioning that so what you've just seen is me battling with the decals from Star Decals which were quite a problem and then we've rectified that by sanding it down re-adding um, uh, adding the cast texture back in and then using the, the the decals from Tamiya which actually went on okay cutting around them nice and tight um, and then uh, now we've really we've got the tracks on the wheels are on everything's ready to go so it's it's the final part so what I've uh, managed to get hold of is uh, for some reason we do not get a tow cable in this one and interestingly I've just I'm um, um, at the same stage on the Ryefield um, Firefly, which you'll be seeing at some point. Um, and that does come with a tow cable, which we get in the usual sort of string. So what I've done is gone to this, and um, this was an eBay job. So this is, this is I imagine it's the same thing. They were, they were a bit funny, uh, because I imagine most people are going to be buying it for the M4. And to get it for the M4, it came with something else. I can't remember what it was. It was something you don't need. And they're trying to shift this other little bit of resin. Uh, so I've just bought this one which is for an M10, M18, M36 so I mean I've checked it, it fits. Do let me know if there is a difference, I'm almost certain there isn't and it's really good stuff when you compare it to uh, as I say the Ryefield one which is obviously cotton you can see. This is um, very pliable and it stays where you put it but it is metal and it's not, it's not got that because these cables were stiff they weren't like this you know, you, you see them hanging off the side and they're like, oh, there you go. And you just have it hanging over dangling. I mean, they were quite rigid. And if you ever come across these, these sort of around shipping and that sort of stuff, I mean, the size of this cable would be quite sort of probably like that sort of diameter in real life. Pretty stiff stuff. So that's quite good. You can add in some rigidity to it, oh, which is good. And um, uh, which is good, which is good, which is good. And where are we? The eye hooks are resin and um, very nicely done and they've pre-drilled drilled, and as long as you haven't got any loose ends um, really you want to sort of twist it in the direction of the twist of the cable uh, they go on nicely so that's super glue um, spray it all up and stick it on so that will be one of the next jobs I've also got all of the tools separate so uh, we've got those to add back in like I said about the figure uh, we're going to be abandoning abandoning him at the minute I know <coughs> we could say there's an argument to add the figure but I've decided not to so yeah, that cuts a st long, st <laughs> long story short and then I also got a bag of stowage so uh, this is US mixed stowage in 135th scale and this was off of eBay again I can't remember the seller but if you search there's only one person really doing it in the UK that is and I'd selected out a load of stuff that's um kind of quite flat and in boxes that will sit on the back so we're going to use the tray there I've got some jerry cans so we can um, 
just set it up a little bit like it's going to be. Where are we? Uh, someone mentioned in a comment um, about sorting out the handle of the machine gun. Can anyone let me know what that is in reference to? Did it not have the the hand grip back here? If anyone can let me know, that would be great because um, I'll, I'll, you know, I can take it off. This hand grip back here. I was wondering if that perhaps wasn't there, but I mean, how else would you have held it? I don't know what they were on about. Sorry, if you are um, watching <laughs> part two, can you elaborate, please? It'd be it'd be good. Um, so I was going to add like uh, jerry cans like that and maybe tie it down with some string. Uh, so I'm going to use cotton and just tie things off. Maybe just really logical. I don't like to see people go like this and stick that on the side of the turret with absolutely no idea how it stays there. You know what I mean? I like to have some sort of um, idea. So I will be just tying most of this down. Um, again, where I've put that bedroll there, you want to think it probably wouldn't flop over the end but I had it just over the fuel cap I mean it wouldn't be like that so it needs to sit flat doesn't it and, and kind of take the weight so it's a little bit of um it's a little bit to play with there's one of the German boxes which I might use I'm going to use some stuff on the firefly as well oh, here you go do you want a sneak peek at the firefly while we're here It'd be nice to see them both together won't it there you go that's the Ryfield models firefly which is fast on approach after the M4 is done with so there we go. It's a beast of a thing. So I was going to add some of this on the back of there as well, for instance. So, um, I'll dish them out between the two. So here we go. Let's get rid of that. I don't want to dilute it. He's got his time to shine in the next video. So there we go. So hopefully this is all the sort of thing you like to see. I had to rip these off to um, do the repaint. So I'm going to glue them back on again. That's the spare tracks on the side, which were bolted on. And I can see a bolt. I think there's going to be a wing nut there, but I'm going to, again... Uh, plead ignorance and leave it off that obviously is a German um, box what I was going to do before I bought all of this which is a trick you could do if you uh, want you know a little hint uh, I didn't have any American stowage so what I was going to do was use generic boxes like that and then fill it out with some of this German stuff and put a tarpaulin over it so it just gives you the sort of structure you know so something like that you want to think obviously the turret you can't foul the turret so if you had a block like that say and then maybe put some smaller boxes on top and then you draped over some damp tissue paper or something like that and tied it down you wouldn't see it but you'd have the structure so uh, one little way you could do it or you could obviously make these boxes out of anything you can make it out of um, cardboard and do the same thing just to give you the structure so that was my initial thought that's why they're out but now I've got um, these other actual alloy bits I'm probably just going to make it up with those paint them and um, not put a top over it so that's the idea that's where we are we've got plenty of bits going on here and, you know we're running right down into into the final part so it's been a lovely build so far it's been a great um, return back to armor for me I'm very happy with it Tamiya is uh, certainly a good way to go comparing this one to the Ryefield Firefly I know um, Meng have done a easy eight as well <sighs> I'm not sure with all the extra complexity I don't know I'm I'm in two minds as to which way I'd go especially with a Sherman um, we'll get on to that when we do the Firefly build but just a sort of sneak peek I suppose you know I'm very happy with rubber band tracks for a, for a Sherman and you know when Meng and Ryfield model are going down the interlinking tracks which is an awful lot of effort and you don't really get any sag uh, you know it's questionable I'm not sure I'm quite happy how these have turned out. I've added a tiny bit of sag here and there. Uh, so, you know, it's nice. It's good stuff. So this has been a very enjoyable build. Bit of a strange end to this video. And we'll pick it back up in the next one. So apologise for that. But obviously, you know, every, a lot of things are going to change. <laughs> including my modelling. So uh, I can't be going off and spending money on things that um, aren't necessary at the minute. So I'm sure we're all in the same boat. And I'm sure you're perfectly um, well uh, understand and um, agree there we go so as always uh let me know any of your thoughts in the comments below uh if any of you use star decals or had to redo the decaling or um sand bat paint you know let me know your your horror stories and how you've got through it uh if the chappy mentioned the thing about the guns watching i'm all ears so do let me know if you could elaborate and until the next time stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video